The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company. Hello again, Reese Davis here in our ESPN studios. We're proud to present Sports Figures Commercial Free. It's where science meets sport. Now it's time to kick around some more energy with karate master Tiger Shulman and our Jackie Maloof. Okay, Jackie, lesson one, feel your energy. I think I feel it, yeah. Okay, get in touch with your energy. I'll be back. Okay. I feel it, yeah. I feel it. Lesson two. Sports figures. Put your brain in the game. You know, breaking boards and cement blocks with your hand is definitely not something that you want to do at home. If you try and break a cement block with your hand, your hand breaks. Now that makes sense, right? But how come sometimes these karate masters can break a whole pile of cement blocks and not break their hand? Is there some kind of secret energy that they've tapped into? What do they know that we don't? See that guy behind me? That's Tiger Shulman, six-time North American full-contact karate champion. So he gets to break anything he wants. Okay, Tiger, let's talk about breaking things. Well, the first thing you have to understand is that before breaking any objects, you need proper instruction. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Right, and you know, martial arts is a lot more than just breaking objects. It's a total mind and body workout. Oh, but come on, Tiger, you have to admit it's pretty cool when someone breaks a whole bunch of cement bricks with their head or their hand or something. It's cool, but it's not the only thing. Okay, but for me, will you show us how it's done? Okay, Jackie, there's a couple things you want to think about before you break. Number one, you want to make sure that you're accurate. You got to find the weakest point of the object and make sure you hit that point. Okay. And two, You've got to make sure you visualize it, go all the way through the object. Okay, let's see you do it. Okay. Yes! Oh. Okay, and your hand isn't broken? It's fine. Uh, wait a minute. How, how can that be? So let's use a big board like this so we can see what's happening better. Now, what happens when your hand hits the board? The wood bends. But why does it bend? Your hand is moving, then it hits the board, then what? Well, the wood moves too. The bend is the wood moving along with your hand. Right. The movement of your hand is transferred to the board. The wood moves by bending. Now, we have just demonstrated one of the most important laws of physics. That energy is transferred. What about a hand or a foot? Do they have energy? People don't normally think of them as having energy, but they do. Well, not these, because they're just sitting here. But if I do this... Strike three, you're up! In physics, when we talk about energy, we're talking about something's ability to do work. The hand turned on the machine, so it did work. If it did work, it must have had energy. That's the definition of energy something's ability to do work. Now lifting this phone is work because work is defined as applying a force over a distance. Now I'm holding the receiver to my ear by applying a force, but I'm not doing work. I'm just applying a force. But when I lifted the phone from here to here, I was doing work. And because I did work, I must have used energy. And work means energy. <laughs> Phew, I really need a vacation. Yeah. OK, so what happened when my hand made contact with the board? Well, the hand does work on the wood because there's a force over the distance. OK, well, the force is obvious, but what about the distance? 
the distance of the wood bent. Right, so if we applied a force over a distance, then my hand must have done some work. And if it did work, then... Then it must have energy. Right. When something has energy because it's moving, we call that kinetic energy, the big K-E. Kinetic, motion. Kine is from the Greek word for motion. It's also where a word for cinema comes from. Motion pictures, kinetic pictures. Anything that's moving has kinetic energy. You can figure out how much kinetic energy something has with a formula that looks like this. One half mass times velocity squared. Simple, right? Just take half the mass and multiply it times the velocity squared and you know how much kinetic energy you have. All right, all right, keep it down. Shh, yeah! <laughs> the measurement that we use for energy are called joules. Now that's not these kind of joules. Joules of energy are J-O-U-L-E-S named after James Joule, a 19th century scientist. And we can figure out how many joules of energy a karate chop has by using the mass and velocity of a hand. See, a hand is pretty light. It doesn't have much mass, only about 7 tenths of a kilogram. So how can we increase the amount of kinetic energy? By increasing its velocity. Oh. Oh. Right, that makes sense. To get maximum energy out of your hand, you have to get maximum velocity. So how does Tiger do it? See, if you notice, when I came nice and far back, to give my hand a lot of speed before I struck the board. OK, to break the wood or concrete, we're going to use our muscles to move our hand, giving it kinetic energy. When our hand hits the board, it's going to transfer most of that energy into the wood. That energy is going to move the wood. It's going to bend. Now let's pretend that this is our piece of wood. Now what is happening? Well, the inside part is scrunching up and the outside part is stretching. Exactly. Anything that bends does the same thing. The material along the inside of the bend is compressed and the material along the outside of the bend is stretched. Now this stretching is called tension. When you apply a force that squeezes something, that's compression. When you apply a force that stretches something, that's tension. Different materials react differently to different forces. This rope works pretty well in tension, but if we try to compress it, stop! <laughs> strong in tension, not strong in compression. Hey, nice to meet you. A three-quarter inch piece of pine, six inches wide, with supports at 10 inches, takes about 10 to 15 joules of energy to bend enough to break. Yeah! Awesome. A concrete block takes about 35 to 40 joules of energy. Can your hand generate that much energy? Now the mass of Tiger's hand is about 0.7 kilograms, and the velocity is, how fast does this thing go? About 100, 120 miles an hour. Well, scientists say it's probably a little bit more like 30, which is 13 meters per second. Now all we have to do is take half the mass, 0.35 kilograms, and multiply it by the velocity, 13 meters per second squared, and we get... 63 joules. 63 joules of kinetic energy. 63 joules of energy, that's a lot, but not superhuman. A professional baseball pitcher puts twice that, 120 joules of energy, into a fastball. <laughs> oh. Okay, here it is. The big secret to breaking stuff in karate. Remember what we said about bending? It puts the wood under compression on the top and tension on the bottom. Both wood and concrete are weakest under tension. Pulling apart. The force of tension, stretching, on the lower surface starts the crack. The crack weakens the wood even more, and the break travels up through the top of the board. Now remember what we figured out for Tiger's hand? It can deliver about 63 joules of energy. So, 
Now we know why a board cracks or a piece of concrete, but what about your hand? <laughs> this guy's been drinking his milk. Human bones are strong, very strong. And we have a guy here today that knows a lot about human bones. He's an orthopedic surgeon and author of Jock Doc Body Repair Kit, Dr. Andrew Feldman. Hi. How are you? Good. So what can you tell us about human bones? Well, human bones are about 60 times more elastic than pine boards. And they're under compressive and bending forces are about 40 times stronger than concrete. No way. Way. A human hand can withstand about 1,200 pounds of pressure. Wow, so that's why a properly thrown karate chop can break concrete or wood without breaking a hand. So this guy's really strong. The key is, is for Tiger to get his hand moving fast, very fast. It has to go from zero to 30 miles an hour between here and the board. That'll give him 63 joules of kinetic energy, more than he needs. And your hand doesn't break because your bones are actually more elastic and stronger than the wood or the concrete. Yeah, but like I told you before, you need proper training in order to break boards or blocks or any objects. Exactly. Would you sign my cast? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. All right, so what did we learn? Good. That energy is the ability of something to do work. And that work is a force to fight over distance. Yeah. Anything that's moving has kinetic energy. And energy can be transferred, like from your hand to the wood. You can find out how much kinetic energy by using the formula Ke equals one half the mass times velocity squared. We measure kinetic energy in joules. Yeah. Even though your bones can withstand the blow, you still have to know what you're doing. Well, that's it. We'd like to thank everyone that helped us out today. Tiger Shulman, Ron Shulman, our students, Christina, Alex, and Stephanie, Tyrone, Joseph, and Dennis on ESPN Sports Figures, Breaking Energy. Get up! Why didn't I think of that in the first place? We'd like to thank today's athletes for donating their time to help put your brain in the game. I'm Reese Davis, and we'll see you next time on Sports Figures. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. For a free teacher's curriculum, to order the Sports Figures series, or if you have questions or comments, visit our website at ESPNSportsFigures.com. You can also call 1-800-565-0452. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Sports, sports Figures, put, put your, your brain, brain in the, the game. game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company.